it, it is, uh, I, I don't even really know where to start on answering this question. Uh, of course the elections will not be rigged. What does that mean? <laughs> the federal government doesn't run the election process. States and cities and communities all across the country, they're the ones who set up the voting systems and the voting booths. And uh, if Mr. Trump is suggesting that there is a conspiracy theory that is uh, being propagated uh, across the country, including in places like Texas, uh, uh, where typically it's not Democrats who are in charge of uh, voting booths, um, that's ridiculous. That doesn't make any sense, and I don't think anybody would take that seriously. Uh, now, we do take seriously, as we always do, our responsibilities to monitor and preserve the integrity of the voting process. If we see signs that uh, a voting machine or system is vulnerable to hacking, then we inform those uh, local authorities who are running uh, the elections that they need to be careful. With respect to uh, how this thing unfolded last year, let's just go through the facts pretty quickly. At the beginning of the summer, we're alerted to the possibility that the DNC has been hacked. And I immediately order law enforcement, as well as our intelligence teams, to find out everything about it, investigate it thoroughly, to brief the potential victims of this hacking, to brief on a bipartisan basis the leaders uh, of both the House and the Senate and the relevant intelligence committees. And once we had clarity and certainty around what in fact had happened, we publicly announced that in fact Russia had hacked into the DNC. And at that time we did not uh, attribute motives or uh, you know, any interpretations of why they had done so. Uh, we didn't discuss what the effects of it might be. We simply let people know, the public know, just as we had let members of Congress know, that this had happened. And as a consequence, all of you wrote a lot of stories about both what had happened and then you interpreted why that might have happened and what effect it was going to have on the election outcomes. Uh, we did not. And the reason we did not was because in this hyper-partisan atmosphere, at a time when my primary concern was making sure that the integrity of the election, election process was not in any way damaged, at a time when anything that was said by me or anybody in the White House would immediately be seen through a partisan lens. Uh, I wanted to make sure that everybody understood we were playing this thing straight, that we weren't trying to advantage one side or another, but what we were trying to do is let people know that this had taken place. And so if you started seeing effects on the election, if you were trying to measure uh, why this was happening and uh, how you should consume the information that was being leaked, that you might want to take this into account. Uh, and that's exactly how we should have handled it. Imagine if we had done the opposite. It would have become immediately just one more political scrum. And part of the goal here was to make sure that we did not do the work of the leakers for them by raising more and more questions about the integrity of the election right before the election was taking place. At a time, by the way, when the president-elect himself was raising questions about the integrity of the election. And finally, I think it's worth pointing out that the information was already out. It was in the hands of WikiLeaks. So that was going to come out no matter what. Uh, what I was concerned about in particular was making sure that that wasn't compounded by potential hacking that could 
hamper vote counting, affect the actual election process itself. And so in early September, when I saw President Putin in China, uh, I felt that the most effective way to ensure that that didn't happen was to talk to him directly and tell him to cut it out, and there were going to be some serious consequences if he didn't. Uh, and in fact, we did not see further tampering of the election process. Just to be clear, do you believe Vladimir Putin himself authorized the hack? Even though when pressed by our Martha Raddatz, President Obama pointed a finger at the Russian president. Not much happens in Russia without Vladimir Putin. The White House says there is no question Russia interfered in the U.S. election and has been harassing U.S. diplomats abroad, like this incident in July when a Russian police guard tackled a U.S. diplomat. And tonight, the Obama administration is offering new details into how Russia pulled off the cyber assault, a campaign the U.S. is calling Grizzly Step. According to this report, two Russian groups hacked Democratic officials and the DNC, stealing tens of thousands of internal emails. The hackers tricking their victims into handing over their credentials by mimicking their employer's email system.